Oh boy, IndyCar is headed to Fox in 2025 and they unveiled their 2025 schedule. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. I'm not kidding. IndyCar is actually headed to Fox Sports in 2025. So I hope you're ready to see Joseph Newgarden in comic book cartoon form. You know, chiseled jaw, six, 12 pack abs, probably for being honest here, and biceps that make The Rock absolutely jealous because Fox picked up the IndyCar broadcasting rights for 2025 and beyond. Not sure what the beyond portion of it is, but it is beyond Buzz Lightyear style. So what does that mean for IndyCar? Well, actually, kind of good news. So all 17 IndyCar races will be on Network Fox next year, meaning you don't need a cable subscription to watch all of the races. Major win, right? It's not going to have a streaming service exclusive race. There's not going to be races on USA. You can buy a digital antenna and watch all the races free over the air on Network Fox. Major win for the series, major win for the teams and the sponsors. A lot more exposure should be more people tuning in. So what's the downside here? I know people are wondering that. They're like, Matt, what could the downside possibly be? Well, it's on Fox. And I think we all agree that the NASCAR and Fox broadcasts have deteriorated over the last few years. And I've seen people that are like, hey, I'm going into this with an open mind, right? If nobody from NASCAR and Fox is involved, well, maybe it'll be okay. I don't know about that. I don't think it's necessarily the people at you know that are running the NASCAR and Fox productions. I think a lot of the direction kind of comes from the people up top, the suits, you know. Suits hate horsepower. Suits hate to actually show you the on-track action at times where we're constantly looking at fans in the stands or the landscape, the sky, zooming in on the curbs, you know, whatever, anything but the actual racing. So I am excited about this. Don't get me wrong. I think having all the races on network are great. Practice and qualifying sessions right now are pretty much exclusively on Peacock. All of those will be on FS1 or FS2. Again, better exposure for the series, for the sponsors, for the drivers, for the teams. Great. All Indy NXT, Indy Lights races for the rest of us that don't want to call it NXT will be on FS1 and at times on FS2. Major win for everybody involved in that series and exposure for their sponsors. Because again, right now all the races are on Peacock and I'm guessing they maybe get 20,000 people that tune in for those. Not great. So at the end of the day, this is great for the exposure of IndyCar. Now, I understand from a fan perspective and from a wallet perspective, some people are going to be pissed off about this because right now you can pay your, what, $6 a month on Peacock, or if you get it on their Black Friday deal for $2 a month, like this guy, then you don't really have to, you know, you're not thinking about it, right? It's a low cost. You get all the races, you get all the practice qualifying sessions, and you get any indie lights. Now... Mm, not so much. If you want to have practice and qualifying sessions, you'll have to have a cable subscription, or it is expected that it will be part of the new venue sports uh, streaming service, which is a conglomerate of ESPN, Fox, and Warner Brothers kind of putting all of their sports content together for a package, which will likely be somewhere between $40 and $50 a month, substantially higher than what Peacock is, but you do get sports from all three networks. So I can understand why people will be upset about that. I absolutely get that. If you just want to watch the races, though, free. Great for you. So what are the broadcasts going to look like? Well, we don't know who's going to be in the booth yet. Obviously, IndyCar will have 17 races. The NASCAR portion of the Fox schedule has shrunk down to only 14 races in 2024, 2025, rather. Uh, and they don't have the NASCAR Xfinity Series anymore. So that frees up a few people like Adam Alexander, possibly a Jamie Little. Who knows? Maybe Mike Joy will transition over and call IndyCar races after the NASCAR portion of the season is over. Obviously, IndyCar will have the Indianapolis 500. We'll continue to be on Memorial Day weekend. Fox lost the Coke 600. So that freed up their date for them on Memorial Day weekend. The Indy 500 will be on Fox. Fox will now have the two biggest domestic races in this country, the Daytona 500 in February, as well as the Indianapolis 500 in May. A major win for them. We'll have to wait and see who the booth is. But according to Mark Miles, IMS Productions will still assist with the production of broadcasts, much like they did with NBC, which is a good thing, in my opinion. Now, everybody's going to be concerned about whether or not, you know, Fox will do random crowd shots of kids when there's actual on-track racing happen. Imagine them cutting to the grandstands as Joseph Newgarden goes around the outside on the last lap into turn three, a paddle award in the Indianapolis 500, and they come back and they're just like, oh, he's in the... People would riot. So hopefully the broadcast has a better direction. But when it comes down to it, this is a major win. Obviously, we knew that IndyCar was in negotiations with both NBC and Fox. And according to IndyCar, NBC could not match the number of network races that Fox could, which is all of them, obviously. 
In addition to Fox, they'll also have coverage of the Indianapolis 500 qualifying days on both Saturday and Sunday on Network Fox. Again, a major win for them. I'm curious to see if Saturday is going to be fully on Network Fox or if that's going to be broken up and some of it will be on FS1. Either way, it's still great that it'll be on Network because it wasn't previously with NBC. At least day one wasn't. Day two definitely was. So again, there's a lot of good things that are coming out of this. NBC previously for this year and years in the past was paying rumored to be $20 million annually. We have to assume that that number definitely grew with Fox. So that's a great win for Roger. At the end of the day, this should be good. I think everybody is going to reserve judgment until we see what the actual broadcast looks like. And hopefully it doesn't get the NASCAR on Fox treatment, like the sideshow comedy with like the redneck shtick to it. It doesn't deserve that. IndyCar has a great on-track product, terrible leadership at times. Hopefully we get a good broadcast that represents what's on track and not what we get with with the NASCAR coverage currently. So we'll have to wait and see for it. But obviously they did just get rid of NASCAR Race Hub and there's a lot of employees at Fox that could hopefully transition over here and maintain jobs and everything that goes along with it. So I'm happy about this, reserving a little bit of judgment. IndyCar also unveiled their 2025 schedule on Thursday as well, and there were a few different changes on here. Uh, it will still remain at 17 points races. Milwaukee will lose one of its races from its double header. That points paying race will now be at the Thermal Club, which goes from a million dollar challenge, more like $100,000, and will now be a points paying race. The ultra exclusive motorsport club in Thermal California in the Coachella Valley will now host a points paying race because it's a <laughs> growing market for IndyCar where tons of people are going to be able to go and it's hot next to a major no it's not any of those things a bunch of people won't be able to go it's not next to a major city it's in the middle of nowhere but hey a bunch of rich guys want to pay to have IndyCar go there so IndyCar is going to go there we'll have to wait and see although I do think having a full field of cars on that track will actually be better than the half fields that we saw for the million dollar challenge the other changes that are happening um, Laguna Seca moves from June. It will now be at the end of July. It will partner on like a West Coast swing with Portland. That's good. The Gateway Race moves up to June 15th, which is interesting because that's very close to when the NASCAR date was this year. We'll have to wait and see where the NASCAR date is in 2025. But those are kind of the big changes overall. Those series will end on August 31st, meaning that IndyCar will have a five-month off season. That's very long. Um, the season obviously starts March 2nd on the streets of St. Pete. And then it goes to Thermal. There's one race in April, which feels like a massive miss. That will be April 13th at Long Beach. And then you get into May. Obviously, you have Barber, Indianapolis Road Course, Indy 500, everything that goes along with that. June, first race after Indianapolis will be the streets of Detroit again. Major L there should definitely be an oval, preferably Michigan. Obviously, that will never happen as long as they're racing on the streets of Detroit and Roger Penske is still alive. So that's never going to change. And then July is absolutely packed out, including an Iowa double header. And then they fly right into August and then end at the National Super Speedway on August 31st because Fox, of course, has NFL and college football coverage. 17 rounds just doesn't feel like enough. There should definitely be any car should have a 20 round championship. I think everybody agrees with with that. Maybe not so much the teams, but you kind of need it because right now you have uh, basically as many months off as you have on, which is good for like, you know, work life balance. But in terms of making your series relevant, it's just not. So let me know in the comments what you think about Fox taking over the broadcasting rights for IndyCar, their schedule. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.